Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here. We got another ammunition test for you today. We're gonna to be shooting some G2 Research RIP ammunition. Now you guys might recall, uh, you know, we've done a little bit of work with the Glock 43 and nine millimeter. If you happen to see that video, you saw where we tested out uh, the RIP round. The 380 has been very, very popular as a defensive round. There's been a lot uh, more guns coming out in recent years uh, in very small configurations for everyday carry use. And as a result, you know, a lot of folks are looking to get a good 380 round that's good for personal defense. You don't have any over penetration. You got the proper amount of uh, killing power that you need out of the round. You know, a lot of folks have been concerned about 380 as a defensive round. Um, but we're going to definitely be testing out their little 380 round here. It's a 62 grain copper uh, solid. Of course, uh, RIP stands for Radically Invasive Projectile, or I guess you could just say rest in peace. Okay, that's kind of one of the little little puns there on the whole RIP idea. Uh, but they are a Georgia-based company here. You know, we always like to, to support our Georgians when we have the chance. Uh, we are going to be running it out of a Glock 42. Uh, this is a very popular 380 pistol. A lot of folks are clamoring over the little 380 Glock 42 and the Glock 43 and 9mm. Uh, we're going to be shooting some clear ballistics, 10% uh, FBI ballistics gelatin just as a baseline for you. Give you an idea what this little guy is doing. It's a 6x6x16. 6 6 10% FBI spec block. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up one of these guys and you can see it's just a, I mean, it even looks scary, but we're gonna have a look. Many of you have probably seen RIP ammunition, but just as a baseline, I wanna show you guys what's going on with it. And then we're gonna get around to, to shooting some pretty interesting objects. So stay tuned, this is gonna be a very fun video. Uh, let's go ahead and pop this block and have a look, see what we're working with. All right, 62 grain RIP, 380, Glock 42, Let's have a look, see what happens here. Oh yeah, that looked nasty. Let's go have a peek. All right, well that was pretty awesome there, guys. Uh, we see that the rip round here worked exactly like it's intended to. All right, any, any footage I've ever seen of the rip all over the internet, that's pretty much exactly what you see. You get that, that rapid amount of expansion and pedals breaking off and creating their own little wound channels, you know, in about a, eh, you know, four to six inch, you know, area, okay? And then you've got the base carrying through about 10 and a half, uh, maybe pushing 11 inches, so pretty good there. That base obviously is relatively small, but it does penetrate through. So that way with this particular round, the whole idea is that you're getting kind of the best of both worlds. You're still getting some penetration that carries on through, but then you're getting individual wound channels, rapid, uh, expansion and rapid just hell and chaos going on right there when it enters enters the human body or any type of uh, medium you shoot it into. Um, what we're going to do, because bad guys don't run around naked, okay, I'm going to get another ballistic shell block and we're going to do some blue jean material, maybe a turkey leg, and let's just see what happens when you start mixing up some denim and bones and other things like that. Uh, this is a good baseline. It tells us what the round will do but let's see what it'll do in a real world situation. All right guys, four layers of denim, a couple of turkey drums, 10% FBI block. Let's see what happens with a little 62 grain rip round here. Here we go. All right guys, let's have a look. All right, now one of the things about the layers of denim that you're looking for is a lot of inferior hollow point designs will generally clog up uh, and what will happen is that blue jean material will actually cause it to clog and it won't expand uh, you know, like it's designed to do. So we see that we had four layers of denim. And I chose the turkey legs because you got some bone, you got some meat there. You know, something that's going to provide at least a little bit more real world uh, resistance. Okay, But you could see that that rip round went right through the denim, started to break up and create this really nasty, uh, you know, just huge wound in this turkey leg and of course there's bone in there so you got the base punching through right through the center of that bone all of the the uh, individual petals going off and making all of their own damage ripping through see what i did there ripping through all right and then you can see where they go into the front of the block you can see where they've already expanded a considerable amount just in the couple of inches of those turkey legs there. Okay, so that's a very, very good result. That explains exactly what we're trying to accomplish. So we uh, went through about eight inches of this block, which is consistent with the roughly two inches of uh, 
penetration we got through the turkey leg. So that still gives us about our 10, 10 and a half inches of penetration with the base. So guys, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Let's move on. I got some other fun ideas. Um, you know, using this concept, I think you're going to enjoy this. Let's do it. All right, guys, let's see how hot this rip ammo is, you know, but from a serious standpoint, it certainly does have a very uh, gentle recoil impulse. It certainly doesn't kick that bad. So for some of you ladies or smaller frame shooters that are looking for a you know, nice mild load, uh, you know, it'll definitely work. Doesn't really kick too hard. Let's go ahead and see how hot it is though. Here we go. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> well, that's not too bad. Let's move on to some other stuff. All right, guys, we got a watermelon down there and a two liter behind it. What we're looking to accomplish here, obviously, is to shoot the crap out of a watermelon. But two, we want to see if that base carries through and pops a two liter soda behind it. Let's do it. That's pretty wicked. Let's have a look. All right, guys, well, that was pretty dang impressive. We saw that the round slammed the watermelon pretty hard and you know it hit it really hard and had a lot of just rapid expansion with those petals going apart and doing like they wanted because of the way that this rind on this watermelon split apart okay it's just really crazy to see that all right and of course the inside of it for about a four or five inch circumference is just mush like we pretty much expected to see the base carried through um, but it didn't have enough velocity to pop our uh, soda bottle. Now, in defense of the soda bottle, now these things do have pretty thick plastic, okay? It did put a, a good mark on it. We found the base right there on the table. Okay, so it carried on through. Also, the penetration of the base is consistent with uh, the ballistics gel testing we did earlier. So, you know, that's a pretty large watermelon. If that were a perp or a critter or something you're trying to kill, that's certainly some nice defense medicine, okay? Let's move on to some other things. I think we've got a pile of other fruit items. Let's have a look. All right, guys, I'm gonna take the G2 Rip 380 here. I'm gonna pop those four cantaloupes down there. See what it'll do to a couple of melons. Let's see what we got here. Oh, just a little bit high. It's like it took them apart pretty good. Let's go take a look. All right, well guys, that was pretty cool. We saw here that the cantaloupe uh, really didn't offer a ton of resistance for that rip round. Yeah, not a whole lot. It's a lot smaller melon than those big watermelons. And the rinds are a little bit thinner too. So. They are thinner, but one, one interesting note is that in the entrance, you can see the rind split in exactly the same way it did with the watermelon. All right, and, and he, even on the second melon, you can still see the rind splitting. Went all the way through the second melon, and uh, we've got an entrance hole in the third, no exit. So it's in here somewhere. Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, with these things being relatively hollow in the center, I was, uh, you know, kind of expecting, you know, maybe just a little bit less penetration. I don't know. They're not really hollow. I mean, you do have lots of crap all in the way there. There it is right there. Check that out. Look at that. Out. There's your base. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's actually quite a bit. And that holds true to our original, uh, you know, test with the penetration. It's just fun to see fruit come apart. There's no uh, sense trying to make heads or tails of it other than... Shooting fruit is always fun. Hey now, none of that. All right, we're gonna try one more thing, get back to it here. All right guys, those cantaloupes look pretty good. We've got a few honeydews down there. A little bit bigger melon, not quite as big as watermelon. Let's, uh, let's see what happens with them. They're a little bit more stout. Seem like they've got a little bit harder rind, so let's see if we can get that base to penetrate down to that third one. All right, here we go. Oh! That thing came apart like mad. Let's go have a look. Well, that was pretty interesting. It's pretty cool, man. That honeydew came apart like crazy. Yeah. Um, the base actually is stuck in the second one here. Went all the way through the first. Got a little entrance hole here. No exit. So we're going to cut it out of there. Got a little HK out the front here. All right. One thing I can surmise is that the density of this uh, honeydew is just, it's so much thicker. The rind is thicker. All the stuff inside of it's thick. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting. I mean, I know it's fruit. It's not a real world scenario unless I guess the guy trying to rob you is carrying a big basket of honeydews and that might be something that you need to factor in. Uh, but other than that, pretty interesting nonetheless. Let's see is it in there? It's in here somewhere. Let me uh, dig it out. Yeah. See what we're working with. There it is. All right. 
kind of stuck in the middle there and all that goop <laughs> mixed in there with all the seeds. Well, yeah, the way to translate this is that all of that goop he just dug out would probably be like, you know, blood and guts and internals and all kind of nasty things, you know. <laughs> yeah. Let's move all on right. to something a little bit cleaner. Yeah, let's get to something else. Let's do it. All right, so one last thing. I've got my stepson Jacob here. You guys might remember him. Uh, Barry and I had him out here, and he was shooting the 10-gauge uh, early on. It was slapping him around, but he's certainly... Uh, not tiny anymore. He's going to take uh, one last shot. We've got three pieces of uh, ham, you know, big old hams, and four layers of blue jean denim, okay? Shoot it in the center, and let's see what that 62-grain uh, rip does at a little Glock 42 there. Go ahead and take it, uh, take it home there, Jacob. All right, let's have a look. All right, Jacob, what do you think there? Came apart pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, the round went in the first ham, and of course, you know, made this really nasty, scary looking hole like we expected. The base went all the way through the second ham. Not much to uh, look at there. All right, third one, it went in, didn't go out the other side. So let's grab our uh, little knife here and see if we can cut it open. Oh, that was easier than I thought it would be. Look at that. Let's see. Okay, we were chopping up this other piece. The base actually ended up being right here where we first made our, our cut. So there's your base. Carry through there just fine. Again, very consistent with what we found before. Four layers of denim, about 10 and a half inches of penetration. I thought the ham would be an interesting experiment. Kind of somewhat close to human flesh, I suppose. Gives us a bit of an idea. All right, guys, we're wrapping things up. The RIP 380 ammo is pretty dang cool. We got to shoot it through a variety of different mediums. Pretty neat stuff. I mean, it's it's been out for quite some time, and I know most of you guys have probably seen it out there, you know, through a lot of social media, but it's still an interesting round. I mean, it's a very unique design. You know, the fragmenting pedals and everything, the base that keeps on penetrating through, and it's 380. I mean, it really gives that round a lot of a lot of power in a small package. Yeah, it kind of kind of adds validity to the 380. I know a lot of folks in a lot of uh, circles with defensive handguns. Uh, well, you want at least a nine millimeter help. Some guys even go, I don't even want a 9mm, you know, they want to step up to a 40 or 45, but yep. the 380 does have a lot of snap, a lot of pertinence uh, with a round like that rip there. It does. Um, you know, nice light recoil impulse. Well, you know, 62, kick hard. Yeah, 62 grain projectiles moving about 1,250 feet per second. So, I mean, it's got a lot of gumption there, but very, very manageable. I was shooting uh, some sodas earlier, you know, grouping a little bit, you know, very good accuracy from about, you know, seven, eight yards away, uh, you know, what you would expect from a carry round. And then uh, we were also shooting the gopher a little bit, you know, just pegging him. And, uh, you know, he knocks him back pretty well. Not as much as some of the bigger handgun calibers, but a little 380 will do the trick. I think so. some of the testing we did earlier kind of proves, you know, that with the denim and everything and all of the different ballistic mediums we tried it out of, should demonstrate how effective the round is. You know, we wanted to just kind of get our hands on it. I know a lot of folks have been talking about rip ammo over the years, and, you know, it, it has been highly publicized. A lot of folks have, you know, had a lot of excellent videos out there on the subject, but we wanted to kind of take our stab at it and uh, give our opinion on it. There's a lot of controversy out there about it, too. Some people love it, some people hate it, they swear by it, or they don't want anything to do with it. You know, but, I mean, after seeing the one test with the denim, turkey legs, and the ballistic shell, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, people you know, can say what they want, but you don't want to get hit by that 380 round. Heck no. Nobody would. All right. Well, guys, this was just meant to be kind of a fun video, a nice little, you know, quick sort of redneck ammo test like we're known for doing. Uh, but stay tuned. We've got a lot more on the way, many more uh, ballistics gel tests, ammo tests, product reviews. I mean, we've always got a lot going on, more gun gripes, uh, basically just all sorts of things that we have going on. We're staying so, busy. Yeah, staying very busy. Uh, guys, we appreciate you watching today's video. We'll catch you next time. Take it easy.